thanks to the supporters of channel member Felix Bjorkman. Well, it all comes down to Inter again. They, uh, they've caused a few problems. They've beaten us in the Champions League final before. Today is a Champions League semi-final and they stand between us and our second final in three years. I'd really quite like to beat them this time. Please. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 21 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have both legs of our Champions League semi-final against Inter. Since you were last with me, um, we have had uh, winning the Bundesliga rubber stamp. That might have even happened in the last episode. I, we've not really been focusing on what's been going on in the Bundesliga, um, but the league has been won. The league was won long ago. It's kind of... Uh, it's kind of a non-event when you're that far clear at the end of the season. I've compared this league to Scotland in the past and it does feel a little bit like it. It just seems automatic that we're going to win the Bundesliga at this point um, and our sole focus is on the Champions League. The one thing winning the Bundesliga does do is guarantee us Champions League football again for next year, which means we've got budgets and budgets have increased massively. And interestingly as well, despite completely dominating Bundesliga, um, we are the only team in the league who ran at a profit this season. We ran at a £20 million profit. Um, I don't know if the little uh, if the little graph is still available in my inbox. Can we have a look? No, it's not. It was nice, though. We were at a profit and every other team in the league ran at a loss. So, Kev does money. This season, you've had me mess around button-clicking with tactics and... Be financially sensible. I mean, to be fair, we did also spend nearly £500 million, but we did it in a financially sensible way, in a sustainable way, in a profitable way. Now let's go and win the Champions League. This is the team that is facing Inter in that first leg. Inter, by the way, who are second in Syria uh, behind City rivals Milan, Torino, who are also still in the Champions League, lagging quite far behind. I think the other the other semi-final is Torino against Barcelona. If I uh, Oh, no, it's Barcelona against Chelsea. So Torino have been knocked out. So Barcelona against Chelsea. Barcelona, top of La Liga. Chelsea, sixth in the Premier League. So obviously we'd quite like to beat into and then face Chelsea. Although well, to be fair, Premier League clubs are always hard to play against. Although to be fair, to be fair, Barcelona beat us 4-1 earlier in the year. So we really don't want to have to face them. They seem quite good. We're getting ahead of ourselves, though. Today's about Inter. You already know the eleven. It's our best team, and they always get wheeled out for the big occasions. It's Antonio Carlos in goal, a back row of Van Veen, Suarez, Caldere, and Schakowsky. Van Eijmer at the base of the midfield, Bellingham and Carrier ahead of him, Marrera on the left, Herrera on the right, and Big Kev up front, who continues at 25 years old to have a really, really incredible season. 31 goals in all competitions, including 12 in the Champions league now um 7.41 average rating across all competitions as well um he hasn't got 20 bundesliga goals because certainly second half of the season he hasn't played in the bundesliga a lot certainly not as the striker and um, because we've been doing this fancy squad rotation like so he might not like might not look like he's tearing up the world erling Haaland style but he basically is when he plays he almost always scores and at six foot whatever he is six, six foot Eight? Am I making that up? So yeah, six foot eight. At six foot eight, with decent physical mobility, which is no mean feat at six foot eight, and almost a goal a game record, he is definitely my kind of boy. Um, Carrier had the opportunity to break through there, but he just chose not to chase it. It always fascinates me that Aaron Ramsdale is Inter's goalkeeper. This is an all-conquering Inter team. They've won multiple Champions Leagues and are one of the best teams in the history of European football. And Aaron Ramsdale is their goalkeeper. What do they know that Mikel Arteta doesn't know in real life and made him feel the need to sign Brentford's goalkeeper on loan? Um, Carrier, I mean, he's been clattered there by two many in midfield. And Inter are in and... My word. I am, I mean, there are two teams, I think, in this world that I'm afraid of at this point. Inter and Barcelona. And we've potentially got to beat them both if we are going to if we are going to win the Champions League. That's lovely work from Big Kev on the right-hand side. It ends up falling to Bellingham. Bellingham turns and he's looking to create something, ends up giving it to Marrera and now Herrera on that right-hand side. The two wingers are both on the same wing at the moment and somehow didn't. neither of them chose to cross the football, which is fascinating to me. 
And I love the fact that Inter have resorted to an aimless ball forward. Our back three is there to cover. And Suarez, it's a bit of a dangerous ball to Van Eijma, but Van Eijma is so good we got away with it. And then Van Veen does the same thing to Bellingham. And Bellingham doesn't come away with the ball and it has cost us there was two really poor passes from my former Burton men there they're bringing they're bringing their Burtonness to to the Champions League but Suarez put Van Eijer in trouble and he got out of it but Van Veen puts Bellingham in even more trouble and it doesn't matter how good Bellingham is it was behind him and he had a player either side of him. He didn't have much hope of coming away with the ball there. And once again, we are being undone by this horrible box system that interplay and we just don't know how to counter. The whole reason for this tactic we play now, it was all about countering this system. In fact, we're not playing an inverted wing back or a libero, which was the whole point of when we first started experimenting with this was to counter this next time we came up against Inter Milan. Do we switch to a normal back four and put and have Suarez as a libero, maybe? Or have... Mm, I probably should have given that more thought before the match. I forgot just how much I hate playing Inter. I, no, I remembered how much I hate it. I forgot why I hate it. It's this system. Maybe we'll switch in the second half. We'll play a little bit longer like this because Van Veen has done well enough this season to justify his inclusion, but he has given away the goal and he does prevent us from playing, from countering their box with a box of our own. If we put um, Garcia, for example, on an inverted fullback, Suarez could then be the libero and step up alongside Van Eijma and it then becomes four on four in central midfield, which is an insane sentence. The fact that there'll be eight players battling for the central midfield positions, but... I think we probably need to. We're going to make that switch at half time. I don't want don't want to take Van Veen off in the first half. That seems a little bit harsh. Um, can he play inverted wing inverted fullback? He probably can't because he's five foot two or whatever he is. Um, yeah, not really. What we will do, I think, in the meantime, we'll just have him as an inverted wing back and just while he's still on the pitch, get him alongside Van Ajma. We I think we he's more used to us there than being an extra body out wide where he normally causes us problems when we're doing our... It's the same thing we had with the 4 4 last year. We've got a system that can blow teams away most of the time, but this stupid tactic, we just really struggle to face. And hopefully putting Van Veen in alongside Van Eijma will help Van Eijmer's on a yellow card and having to do a lot of defending which is also a little bit worrying he's still a teenager remember and he's having to do a lot of defensive work whilst on a yellow card against a team that has caused us so many problems in the past Tchaikovsky under pressure and that's so poor oh we have gifted them two goals here we we just don't learn this is naivety again. I've talked before about the naivety of this team. Bear in mind, we've won two Bundesligas in a row now. We've we've been to a Champions League final in the past, but we're still so naive. It's no, there's no benefit to having the best goalkeeper in the world if you're going to do that to him. Because what on earth is he supposed to do there? Right, we have shuffled the shape around. So Van Veen now tucking in a little bit more alongside Van Eijma, um, and Big Kev is in. And we need a goal from him here. It took a big deflection. It's hit the post. Herrera cuts it back looking for Bellingham but can't find him. And, I mean, that was a good opportunity. The deflection kind of pushed it onto the post, I think, if it had just been allowed to progress all the way through on its natural trajectory, I think it'd be 2-1 and we'd be back in the game. But we need we need a goal and we need one fast. Herrera with the uh, with the poor effort just straight at Aaron Ramsdale. And we are going to make that that little bit of a shuffly change to the defence at half time. Maybe we should have done it. Maybe we should have started with it. Maybe we should have done it when I first realised what I'd got wrong. Um, but Van Veen's going to come off. Garcia's going to come on. And we're going to play Suarez as the libero. So that becomes a three. Suarez gets up alongside Van Eijma to help him out. I don't want to take him off because he's so very, very good. But at the same time, having a 19-year-old in there on a yellow card against two really good attacking midfielders is probably not ideal. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tempt the football manager gods into having him sent off by leaving him on the pitch for now um, and hopefully getting Suarez in there to help him will uh, will be enough of a difference. Right, we're going to demand more and hopefully 
score a goal in this second half. That would be nice because if we lose 2-0 at home in the first leg, we might as well not bother with the second leg. It's all over. Oh, my word. 3-0 would be even worse. Antonio Carlos does make the save this time. It's behind for a corner. And once again, Inter. Who is their manager? Who is doing this to me tactically time and time again? It's not like the football manager AI to do something quite this frustrating. If it really did learn the way they kind of try to make out that the football manager AI learns, there is no football manager AI. Um, but if there was and it learned, Every team would be facing up to me the way in to do because I just can't deal with it. Do we have to? Do we have to go down the can't beat and join them route and play the same system? Because we've tried going wide of them and they just control the middle. We've tried coming through the middle and they like, with like a diamond and they just outnumber us when we do that. The one thing we haven't tried is lining up exactly the same way they do. Right, Bellingham is tiring. We are going to bring on Ayadeli for him, who has been in good goal-scoring form, weirdly. Um, and then Marrera is also tiring. Um, Hiskey's injured at the moment, so we don't really have an option to come on for him, which isn't ideal. I think we're going to put Herrera out there and bring on Conor Egan. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to put Carrier out there and probably still bring on Conor Egan, but we're going to, we're going to drop Big Kev back into midfield. And we're going to bring on Conor Egan to hopefully stretch the defence a little bit. Yeah, we're going to do that. And fingers crossed, we can we we keep Big Kev on for his aerial exploits. And there is an aerial exploit. Um, but we have a faster striker to try, try and get in behind as well. It's the best of both worlds. And Big Kev with a huge moment. Goal number 32 of the season. It's his bread and butter. It's a header from a set piece. Big Kev puts us back in the game. Let's demand more again. If we can drag this back to 2-2, we leave ourselves with a chance for the second leg, especially if we go out there with the defence set up like this from the start, like it should have been in this game. Right, we've got more tired legs. Everyone is getting tired. Van Aijma, I think, has done his job for today and can now come off and be replaced by Dukic. Um, and for my final change, I don't want to bring on one of the Nick Jonas brothers. That seems bonkers but we are running out of fit footballers in the rotation positions uh, Maui I guess is the one to bring on so we'll take off Big Kev bring on Maui swap those two round let Big Kev have a few minutes of rest I'm not going to go very attacking like I normally would in the final 10 minutes of a game when we're trailing because obviously we've got the whole of the second leg still to go but it would be very nice if we could grab an equaliser from somewhere please we certainly seem to have cut out the apologies, boys and girls, doorbell. Um, not ideal with a minute to go in the match. I think what I was saying is we do seem to have controlled their attack. I mean, they could have just taken their foot off the pedal a little bit. Oh, an equaliser here would be handy. Dukic is up and he scored. And that is such a huge moment. It's 2-2. Two -two. We've done it with two set pieces. And we have given it, got ourselves back level, ready for the second leg. And now I have to start trying to figure out what on earth I'm going to do for the second leg. Are we really going to go there on an attacking instruction? I think we probably are. It's the only way we know how to play. But we need to have the defence set up like this because it maybe has just cancelled out Inter in that second half and allowed us that route back into the match. It's 2-2. We've still got a huge amount of work to do because we've got to go to Italy and win the match, which is not really the situation we wanted to get ourselves into. But that is that is important. Those, those couple of headed goals there. Ho, 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 ho. Maybe. Maybe this is the year. So nice big 5-0 win with our very rotated team. I mean, look at the uh look at the eleven. We we do proper rotation now. Egan's in, Dukic, Maui, Ayadeli, and we've got Fontanils, Ferreira. We know how to rotate. We still win 5-0 when we do. Um, but now we've got to now we've got to sort ourselves out for this second leg. So job one. We've got to get rid of Van Veen. Um, we're going to play with the two inverted fullbacks, Suarez as the libero on support. So we go to that back three and then the midfield four to cancel out their midfield four. We're going to stay on the attacking instruction. You know who the 11 are. It's the same as ever, apart from the fact Garcia is in. And let's just hope it works. Let's hope that our, uh, that our four cancels their four. And then our front three just rips them apart. That's the plan. 
I don't know if it's a good plan, but it was basically the whole reason we rebuilt the defence in the way that we did over the summer. It was to allow us to do this in matches like this against this lot because they're out. They're our big enemies. Right, Carrier, look at that. Straight away, we've got the four. It gives us that little bit of control in midfield or at least stops Inter completely controlling the midfield. Carrier bursting out of that midfield and now Marrera across to Big Kev. We've scored inside 10 minutes. It's 1-0 on the night. It's 3-2 to us on aggregate. The tiny little Dortmund contingent that have been squashed away into that corner are absolutely over the moon. It might be happening. I don't even know what's going on in the other leg. I've been so focused on this one. I want it to go down in history. And I'm going to do this speech now in case we still balls it up from here. But I want it to go down in history that I did tactics to get us through this. We, we, we struggled. We got battered by them. And we've gone away. We've learned. We've, we've signed new players to fit a new system. A system I've never used before in Football Manager in order to counter what is ultimately probably the best team in Europe. And it's working. Big Kev skips away from his defender, goes round his... I mean, if he'd have scored there, that would have been incredible. That, that wouldn't have been a Big Kev kind of goal. It was good work from Carrier to set it up, though. Um, but it remains 1-0 to us, and we're still on the attack. Marrera aiming for Big Kev, but can't find him. And Inter all the way back to Ramsdale, and he just lumps it forward, where our big three centre-backs, or four centre-backs back there at the moment, should be able to deal with things sufficiently, you would hope. Suarez has been kind of left on his own, though. But Antonio Carlos, very calm under pressure. And Garcia's sold Marrera a little bit short to put us back in trouble. But this is where we need our four to take care of their four. There's Suarez stepping up out of defence to try and deal with one of the midfielders. He actually got him out of position a little bit and created the chance. And we've been saved by the post. We're still ahead. That's the important thing. We're still ahead on the night. We're still ahead in the tie. It's fine. And we're already all got into pinned back in their half again from this throw. And that was an absolutely insane ball to play to Ramsdale. And he actually dealt with it really well. But now Schakowsky on the right hand side trying to play it into Herrera, but overhits it a little bit. And once again, it's back with Ramsdale. And once again, he's under pressure. It feels like there's going to be. If we're going to keep pressuring Ramsdale the way we are. It feels like we're going to force a mistake. We're doing great work from our front three against the defenders because the front three are actually getting time to, to get forward and create problems, which they've never really had against Inter before. Um, but they have got in behind our back three here. Um, Garcia can't get the tackle in. Suarez, I think, committed a foul there, but looks like he's got away with it. The shoot from range. It's the post again. And then ends up offside referee. It felt offside. I mean, they have hit the post twice in the previous 10 minutes. So I'm glad I did my speech when I did because they're still a very, very good team. We might have leveled the playing field a little bit tactically, but that uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to beat them because they might still be better than us. But at least they're not tactically outclassing us today, which is nice. We're actually ahead of them for possession, although they are ahead of us for XG. So we are we're controlling the game. But we kind of need to, you know, do a, do a few more goals. I think that's how it normally works. And it's now an inter corner. I'm going to be heartbroken if after tactically figuring it out, I then balls it up here. Because if we'd have just started like this in the first leg, we never would have gone 2-0 down. And it would all be very different now because we'd be coming here potentially with a lead to defend rather than having to come here and get a result. But 3-3... Three, three, over the course of the two matches so far. We've shown in the past, we're, we're quality-wise, as good as anybody. We're fairly evenly matched with a team like Inter, even in that Champions League final where I talk about them absolutely battering us. They didn't, it wasn't like they won 5-0. They just didn't let us have a sniff, but they didn't score a lot of their own either. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've always got a chance. Herrera trying to get past their, their defence. Herrera does brilliantly. What a goal from Bruce. Herrera. My goodness me! He had absolutely no right to score there. Look how deep he picks it up. He's got two men on him when he gets it. He goes past one. Now he's still got one to deal with. He goes past him and then shoots from the tightest of angles and scores. It's a 16th goal of the season for him and that puts us 2-1 up on the night. 4-3 on aggregate. What a moment. 
And now we've got a corner. It's Bellingham with the inswinger looking for Big Kev. Oh, the keeper makes a good save. Big Kev got all the contact on that and Ramsdale pushes it away. He's had a... He, I mean, Ramsdale has been very, very good for Inter. We questioned him a little bit in the first leg, but he's played very well in both legs, especially dealing with some awful, awful passes back to him from his defenders. And he did very well again there. Right, I don't think we need to change too much here. I know my instinct is normally to make loads of substitutions, but nobody's tiring. Nobody's playing particularly poorly. We don't want to change anything tactically. I think we're just going to leave as is. We're ahead in the game. Let's let's save our substitutions just in case we need them for extra time because we rotated at the weekend to allow us to keep our first 11 out for as long as possible in this match. Calderi out to Schakowsky and now Bellingham back to Calderi again and now Schakowsky again and it's all the way back to the best goalkeeper in the world Antonio Carlos um, who's come out quite far there but I mean, we've done alright possession wise oh Bellingham that's poor that is really poor from Jude Bellingham a hundred million pounds a club legend captain over a hundred England caps Ballon d'Or winner and he's gone and done that in the Champions League semi-final. I don't even know what he's trying to do. He's trying to play it out to Garcia. It was never going to get there. It was always the wrong pass to make. And now we are going to have to make some changes. And Bellingham is number one to be brought off. Ayadeli comes on for him. Um, and then I think we're also going to... We've got to freshen up in some other areas as well, I think. We've got two men on yellow cards at the back. We have got Fontenils on the bench who could come on. Fontenelles is probably, if we're bringing him on, we'd probably bring him on for Suarez because he's the other guy who can do that libero role stepping out there. So I think we bring him on. And then we'll also bring on Maui in midfield because that allows Ayadeli. Ayadeli plays really well in this in this uh, Mezala role. So let's get some energy into our midfield. We've still got two substitutes left to use. We'll get a third if we if and when we hit extra time. So that would allow us to make a triple substitution. Then Garcia! Cal Calderi! It is, has it been disallowed? Uh, before I get too giddy, I mean, the initial header comes back off the crossbar. Has it been given? I don't know if this is being given or not. Why couldn't the original one go in? We're going to get a look at it from the other angle. I think it's Garcia with the original header. And at that point, yeah, he's miles off. It comes back off the crossbar. Very unfortunate. I got, I mean, I felt, I think I very much strained my vocal cords there as part of that. But we have got three substitutions to use now going into extra time, which is a pretty nice situation to be in because it allows us to freshen things up massively now. Right, Big Kev's going to come off and we're going to bring on Conor Egan. Van Eijmer's shattered. Dukic can come on for him. Do we save this final one in case we need it? That probably is the sensible thing to do, especially looking at the options on the bench. There's nobody I really want to bring on. Obviously, if we have to bring somebody on because of injury, we will. But I think I'm happy as is currently. And let's let's go and grab a winner, shall we? That's a poor ball, a poor ball forward. And they've got got one of my boys in their team, Graven Birch. He's one he's one of the boys. He shouldn't be playing against me in this situation. That's completely unacceptable. I haven't noticed him either, so he must have come on fairly recently. So he's not even a starter for them. They're misusing the boys. It's not okay. And now they're looking to play out a defense and just kind of play through us in the middle again. And now we've changed the uh the makeup of our entire box of four that we had before. None of the original ones are in there. There's a chance they're not going to control things quite so well as the four world-class players we had in there previously. So this whole countering into thing with a box of our own might not be quite as effective. Now we've had to make that change. And once again, looking at the substitutes, thinking, do we want to bring... I mean, Emil Hiskey, I guess, is the one. How fit is he? Um... Not not very. But Herrera and Marrera are both shattered. I think we bring him on. I know he's injured. But I think we bring him on. Quite apart from anything else, if this goes to a penalty shootout, 
I, I'd quite like to have him on the pitch for that. Um, he's now picked up a gashed lower leg as well, which is not ideal. Maybe bringing an injured player on was a terrible idea. We did do that the last time we played Inter in the Champions League as well, didn't we? We brought on Carrier, even though he was injured, if I recall. Um, Antonio Carlos pushes the free kick around the post. It's a corner now for Inter. I'm offering encouragement. Come on, boys. Please don't mess it up from here. Cross comes in. Um, Gravenberch was in there for Inter. Um, and we're not really marking at all. Schakowsky clears it, but only as far as Gravenberch. I wouldn't even class that as clearing it. And they are they are camped out on the edge of their our edge of our area. Now it feels like there's an inter goal coming. I would very much welcome a penalty shootout at this point because I don't see us scoring another goal from open play. Uh, Garcia now gives the ball away and uh, Caldera, who had his goal chalked off, of course, in the 89th minute, playing it forward to Garcia and now Hiskey to Egan. Egan turns and just runs. This is what we brought him on to do. He's so quick, turning, running, bursts into the area, can't get past his man, but he's still causing problems. Fontenelle's Ayadeli, Maui now on the edge of the area. Ayadeli again, and but he's tackled by Gravenberch, but Garcia Garcia heads it back into the mix. And this is a nice little period of pressure for us. Um, but Inter are straight on top of us every time. But Egan's in. Connor Egan. Oh, he couldn't apply the finish. He, I mean, he's the only player on the pitch who gets there for the shot in the first place because he's so quick. But unfortunately, didn't have the composure to just take his... He had more time than he thought he did. And now with a minute and a half of extra time left, Inter have got a corner. Not like this. Oh, it's hideous. I hate Inter so much. We go very attacking. It's not going to make a difference. We're never going to win the Champions League, are we? Oh, my word. More. Somebody do something. Have we got a hero? We don't. We came so close. How different it might have been if we'd have set the defence up properly for the uh, for the first leg heartbreaking stuff um, we do still have the German Cup final to play which I'll show you tomorrow probably I mean yeah we'll show you it tomorrow it might even be part of a transfer special I'm too sad to think at the moment oh well we try again next year, I guess. We've got plenty of money to spend. I genuinely don't know how to improve this team, though. And with Carrier wanting a move to a bigger club, I guess we're going to be spending big on a central midfielder because Carrier's probably going to leave. I think we can probably still upgrade these fullback areas. I'm still not completely happy with that back four. So, so sad. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.